Hello and welcome to today's lesson slash tournament of the Chessweep channel. I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh and this time I am going to do and play some good old good old good old daring defenses and after those daring defenses there'll be some game analysis. If you're excited about game analysis, hey, this is your time. This is your time. Hello there, people. How are you all doing? How much chess you guys did so far? That's my big old question. If you hadn't, and you didn't, I think you're in the right place. You're going to do some practice. Basically, I'm going to practice a bit of chess, show you how to play some daring defenses. And after that, I am going to go ahead and analyze the games of subs, bishop g7. So I'm doing this usual setup to make it sort of dragon-like the whole point is to control this square now this is sort of a unique setup in some ways you're not taking control of the center you're just firing at it all right i think i'm gonna keep it like that in there or as far as I know, f5 is a moo. Hello, Farham. I'm gonna play daring defenses, so anything that falls into the daring defense category. Unfortunately, that suggestion isn't quite there yet. So the point is, as you can see, I am kind of waiting with my knights to develop. Now, this is a high level play. So normally, if you get a chance, you should castle short as soon as possible. However, there's an added benefit that I might have time to exchange this also that my knight isn't blocking the view of this bishop. So chess is kind of a give and take. which is sort of interesting because yeah, I lost uh, track of thought there. So the thing is, the bishops are way more happy if there's nothing in front of them. And that's kind of the added benefit. However, the issue I have is the king is in the middle. So either I succeed using it just a little bit, a tad bit, my bishops, or I give up on that plan and castle. I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my queen was already on d7, so I can take that bishop, and I have a bishop, and quite well not. Knight g5, I'll take that. Takes h6 i'm just asking where that knight is going oftentimes when your opponent pieces go as far as g5 h6 is an interesting move because you ask their intentions knight e4 and knight e4 i don't think is a great idea because i can start pushing the pawns and it's a closed position if you would start pushing the pawn in a different type of position i would start screaming and shouting at you why do you do this in this specific case, however, it more than makes sense because the middle is closed, so the flank becomes the new center. That's kind of the difference. I could even consider taking because the position will be closing up. In fact, I'm going to show you that this is possible now because 
it's a closed position. Now, in an open position, I wouldn't even dare thinking of this move, but it is closed now, so it makes a lot of sense. Notice, once I took, I put all of my pawns on dark squares. Well, not all of them, but the key pawns are on dark squares, kind of taking away space from this bishop. There, and this bishop seems to be running out of air there. I think I will be able to punish that with check and takes, and this bishop will have no squares to go to. Is that right? Hmm. At least I see it's trapped. Hello, J Rod. Let's check and take this. I couldn't take because there would be bishop g3. But in this way it is defended rook g1. And I think white missed an opportunity here to play f3 and at least escape with the bishop. But I do think that my position would be still nice. After queen f5, the bishop is trapped. Bishop takes, I'll take. Morning, Vince Mantillas, how are you? So today I'm going to do game analysis after the tournament and we'll be playing daring defenses, meaning such as dragons, bancos, anything where you take some risks to get good counterplay. Now maybe actually my opponent had this shot, but this time I can castle. And that is not a big threat anymore. I have defenses. My rook is right there to control this square. So now you can see it's a closed position. So my bishop ain't missed that much. Now, again, a side note that normally you don't want to go this direction because you need your bishop, especially in open positions such as the dragon. You can get away with this at times in the English. This is the English. For the English and the King's Indian. He takes. Now I'm up a piece. So the last thing that I need to do is just to start hackling that king over there in the corner. Queen at b3. Always bring your rooks on the open files. That always, always works, even if it's a semi-closed position. Opponent set up a threat, I defended, and also hinting at ideas of doubling on the e-file. Hello, United Chess Club. Hey, Raman Proces, what's up? Queen b5, trying to take some of my stuff, but I'm not gonna give it. I'm going to defend it this way. Also, I might even rover up to the other side. There, this actually allows CD. And my rook immediately hits that lady. There, and that will cost a madame. I'll take that madame anytime I can. And now it is time to cash on out. That king ain't that happy. Hey, Plast, are you? 
as you've seen. Where are we? Where did we go? I don't know, it's a mystery. Anyways, what we've learned in this game that sometimes some strategical ideas are more important than castling. Obviously, this is very high level, but the most important positional thing that we learned was definitely, definitely to give up the bishop when it is closed. It doesn't always work. And most of the time, don't if it's not a closed position. So it's not a closed position. Never give up. Never, ever give up those pieces. There. Somewhat of a rare system. You're giving up some moves for a Fianchetto bishop. Very interesting idea. There, let's go c3. There, let's take. Knight c3. My whole point is, yep, I've got an isolated pawn, but on the other side of the coin, I do have a strong pawn. And the, well, not, the pawn ain't strong, the bishop is strong. And this is terrible as per usual. Takes, takes. Now, giving up the bishop, you can do it, however, it always have a downside. Let's go queen b3, just pressing on that b pawn, and especially because I will get the bishop there. And most of you, if you're just starting out, are not a big fan of bishops. However, the more experience you get, the more you understand Fisher and say, hmm, bishop there, yes. Yep, typical, typical French bishop. And I don't know how Geary glorifies it, but I can't. There's no way I can glorify it. That's actually the issue I have with the French. Not that the French is not playable, obviously it is, but um, on some positional grounds, it has that issue and I don't know if I can forgive, forgive that part of it. Of the French. Okay, let's go bishop a3. Now it would make sense for me to mobilize these guys if possible. Hello there, Anano Keiji. How are you, by the way? The French is definitely a defense. So sometimes you can and hope to get better, but most of the times you won't be because you just don't have that much space. Wow. What a move by my opponent. All right, let's go C4. Just pushing these pawns, bishop c6. Let's roll it, baby. And that's why you love them bishops. They attack the whole board, and you're trying to push, push them pawns all the way. Yep, this is the typical hanging pawns indeed. On the takes. Now, these bishops are happy. Check. That's the first thing you look at. Is your light pieces well coordinated? Secondly, you look at, hmm, is there anything else I can do? Is there anything else I can do? That's the second thing you look at. And that's po possibly the rooks. I'm wondering if I can do something with those guys. Also, d6 is looking nice I don't know if I should go there yep 
Yep, let's go. Targeting that pawn. Also, that's a very strong passer. Queen d7. I could take the pawn, but sometimes piece activity is more important. Also note, you can't ever push the pawn. Your rook is hanging. And um, that's annoying. That must be annoying. All right. Rook e7. Still have to ch double check if everything's all right in the back rank. Because it's sort of key in these type of positions. There. Okay. Let's double. And sometimes you don't want to win pawns, but to maximize the forces. By the way, if you want to request an opening, you can do it through the magic of channel points. A bishop c6 is a positionally sound move. However, tactics often overrule those considerations. And it's checkmate on g7. So what we've seen in this game is the following. Black isn't doing too bad. However, once he, she takes, then it kind of transforms my situation a little bit better with a better pawn structure. And then those bishops starts to lurk really hard. And once I've got that D pawn rolling, I can bank on it. And here it's, by the way, probably is hopeless because this D pawn will be fast. And that F7 pawn needs guidance. So bishop c6 was a mistake, but in a higher sense of the world, it was probably lost anyways. Daring line of the Grunfeld. Well, the whole system of the Grunfeld is fairly daring. So. the reason and again I love and I played some of the French however I just just don't enjoy having that bad bishop so I think there are other openings that are stronger which is a fact no wonder my opponent plays e5 Spain knight f3 d6 let's go through c4 there d4 takes c3 there okay e5 95 and guess what the isolated pawn returns iqp what's the benefit of an isolated pawn the benefit of an isolated pawn is that you get a good old outpost in the center and a super knight targeting that guy over there. Knight e4. Hmm. Takes. Looks suspicious because many of those pieces are loose. And let's take. There. Queen B3 is double attacking. Takes. Hmm. Somewhat surprised. This should be working for me, but it some reason doesn't. Right. 
<clears throat> and it's a mess. It's still a mess because my king is in the center. So once I remove my king, I will be happy. There. Interesting, BC. There, yeah. Castles. And it's still pinned. The good part of it is that even for that, I do get a pawn. And also, it's sort of tricky because the king is a little bit iffy. And I will have a rook for the pieces. If I don't castle, I just did, colon. I just did. How are you doing, my book? Evens gamut, yep. There is some beauty in the evens. There, okay, let's take. Take right there. Um, let's go bishop a3. And even though we have love for the two pieces, if I can coordinate well with my rooks, it's not that bad. Well, Colin, it's about timing. Sometimes you have time to castle, and sometimes you do not. Now, also the good thing is that my rooks are ready to pounce, and Black's pieces are still a little bit passive. Note, those guys are still in the back rank. So oftentimes, you do not have the time, so you always have to think, okay, how can I keep the position going and develop? Okay. Rook e2, just preparing doubling. And again, these are the happy pawns together. You are always happy to see them. It's good to have them defend each other. It's called hanging pawns, as Ananokeji pointed out earlier on. So, no, there are other values. So, the rook is worth five, piece is worth less than that so three but i already got an extra pawn for it so that for some reason does math out as okay for the rook i mean it's logical because it's two pieces worth six the rook is worth five plus a pawn that is mathematically six. Never a math major, never a math major. So don't even accuse me. Okay. Let's keep the queen over there. And probably on a double, so I'm gonna over defend these guys. Okay, bishop d5, it's time to take that guy. And then double in. And now I've got 
pretty pretty strong rooks and the extra pawn and that's kind of like the prerequisite of having a decent position if you can't really take that extra pawn you're not happy okay let's go a4 Stonewall as white, I can give you Stonewall as black. But Stonewall as white just feels wrong. That I, I can't, I resist that one. I'm sorry, because as white, that's very dodgy. But black, you at least get some perks. I hope that is okay with you. Knight a5. However, can I walk on in? Can? Can't? I don't know. You need to. We'll do this good old sandwich. Good old sandwich. No people. Knight c6. Oh, oh my god h4 I have to defend that can just leave it and just leave it be maybe h4 was a bit much probably should have played f3 just should have played f3 they consider it one at this stage it's never really won until your opponent extends their hand, but that obviously doesn't happen even anymore because it is an online game. Okay, that's a brutal move. Oh my god, that's monster move. That is monstrous. Um Okay. Push that pawn. That's a monster, monster move. There. Okay. So rook g3, just eyeing the king and also defending. Monster move. <clears throat> and that's actually the optimal way of playing with your guys um okay queen b5 we're counter attacking they're trying to take my pawn i'll take theirs and that should be an okay deal so once you activate your rooks they can compensate for those light pieces and if those light pieces are passive, then you have a good hope for a counterplay. Takes, I'll take this one. And I'm not, that knight is super passive. takes um here i don't know why i played there exactly a5 but now i've got pawns and that knight is passive so i think this is full compensation if not more some pressing going on there and we're gonna start rolling with the c pawn Have some pressing to do. Oh, what the heck? That was such a brutal move. Such a brutal move. OK. 
Okay, takes b5. Yes, 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 whew, nice, ah, ah. thank you guys. The manager, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime for two months. Welcome back. Welcome back. So yeah, with um, two rooks versus rook and two knights, if you get that extra pawn, then it should be around even-ish, but it's not, not easy. Obviously, generally the two pieces are stronger. Thank you, Diakon. Appreciate it, guys. And again, apologies for staying a bit quiet at that moment. I was trying to focus. All right, e4. I can't really do the stone wall yet, but it's coming on an OKG. So I'm going to do good old, good old accelerated dragon there. Okay, I'm at a six. There, I can take that pawn. That's not that great. And the problem is, once you lose the e4 pawn, in a position like this, there are issues. Namely, not only you lo lose your grace and crown, you also have weaknesses on the other side. So if you're an e4 player, defend, defend the e4 pawn forever.
Thing Black was better if he maintained his light square blockade. Yeah, he had to or she had to defend that light square blockade. Now again, you can see this is a happy position. My bishop is active and the knight is in the way. Although queen d5, I've got to go back. On the other hand, my knight is not loose and not undefended. That's actually an extra and a positive. There, let's castle. Hello, people. There, castle. And the only thing that my opponent sort of misjudges is this queen isn't quite that happy over there. Can I go queen c7? No. I'm going to hit that bishop and sort of pseudo attack the c5 pawn. How do we evaluate which position or piece is weak? So in this position, if this knight ever moves, this can become a target. So that's kind of iffy, putting the that queen there. Now this bishop had no defenders and that's why it was sort of a weak piece. Queen b4. Um, I could take, but I don't want to. I don't really want to take it. Yeah, I should. Maybe I just should. There. Okay, let's go a5. And again, like any takings happen, I will be attacking both of them. Hello, hello, king loves queen. And again, just ch check out what's going on over here. I'm already castled. My bishop is ready to rock and roll. And I'm opening up files for my rooks. And then I still have to get those guys out. But if I manage, then this will be a parte. Knight e4. Opening up the bishop, hitting on that guy. Edgar Saint. Thank you for mentioning your game. I am going to do game analysis right after the event. So if you're interested and you're a sub, so you might be as lucky as getting your game analyzed, stick around. Let's take that. Opening up my rook and such. Now this is a nice move by my opponent. So I will go knight c6 first. I'm willing to part with a pawn just so I can get out my bishop and rook. Not to mention that these guys can be very aggressive. I hear Jim's evaluating light squares are weak. Does that mean there's no defender? Usually it means that the opponent doesn't have a defend defender there. There, okay. All right, let's take it. Diakon, it is Cowboy Bebop. King C2, and it does defend that pawn. However, chess is a difficult game. Just like if you lived in an Edgar Allan Poe novel, okay, you escaped the room, but you are facing the pit. And now, who's going to defend the C pawn? There, rook d1. Then I take this guy. Again, I always have to be mindful that there are no trickies on this side of the board.
guys this is a chess channel so i would appreciate if you would keep it at that um there and we come back for more pawns so be gentle with each other don't go too aggressive really don't want that okay there let's go here i might want to take it later the king moves here this pawn is weak so please keep that in mind king b3 oh b3 what should i do what should i do with my life if you have king b2 yeah i missed that one I really shouldn't have. Okay, let's just go bishop f6. No worries, people. No worries. And I just want to bring my king up there. This is getting nasty. This is getting nasty. All right, let's just go back. Never seen Cowboy Bebop. It's a great one. It's actually an amazing one. Okay, let's go King G7, bring the king in. H3. Yeah, I misplayed this. Just a tad bit. I go b5. I don't think I can. Man, this is so annoying. So annoying. Yeah, I misplayed this. Knight e1. Okay. Rook e8. D3, let's activate the rook. F3, rook E3, let's just bother the king. The good thing is my king is safer. That kind of makes me feel happy. King C4. But tactics is something we live for. And many other things apart from tactics. But B5 is nice. Because I've got this sexy little check. And after Rook takes D7, I'll be... A bit richer with a rook. So en passant, tricks can even win you material. And rook d4 is checkmate. So even when you're on the back foot, you want to make sure that everything is defended. You saw I defended most of my pieces and waited for the moment to strike over there with b5. All right. Guess what's coming? Guess what it is coming? What's coming? Oh my goodness. It's gonna be... The wall of the stones, a stones wall, stones wall, not really, a stone wall. Should be four. Whenever your opponent gets the knight to c3, you get to play it a bit Nimzo style. And the whole point of this system is to control the e4 square. Okay, let's castle. 
and this does have one downside and that's why I wouldn't advise you if you're just starting out to play this way because it creates a weakness and your king ain't that safe however if you're playing with black you definitely have a very nice control of that square which is important here yep the brick barrier defense there oh who's gonna save that pawn now who's gonna save that who's gonna save that rook who's gonna save this pawn all right we're going full ham on this fellow and again and i don't understand and do, do tell me if other streamers ever talk about this. I'm not trying to brag here, but they don't talk about the fact that you want the rooks to communicate with each other. Like, as we should, as human beings, these rooks are lacking communication. And I don't hear that anywhere else. They don't ever say that, that all your rooks should communicate and there should be talks and then your position will be brilliant they don't say that is that yeah you connect your rooks and you chill and you relax and just go back find the reclining chair and just chill they never say that they never say dude dude you've got to connect also i'm not letting that king run away so apart from weakening your king and the stone wall, this is a benefit. Casa is saying the side which connects their rooks first generally wins the game. Ah, Kasai deserves a shout out for that one. So it's Casablanca. Let me check. I think. He doesn't use his. Uh, yep, I remember everything. No, that's not true. Don't remember everything. So if you didn't check out Kasai, you should, because he's amazing. Really good personality, good taste in music. What a taste in music, ma people. He's amazing. So if you like some good hip hop, some good old rap, old style, I think, definitely check out Kasai. And he knows, he knows how this chess game works. So thank you, thank you, Anti, anti Fried Check. And I can't speak. Thank you, Anti Fried Check, for mentioning that. All right, let's go queen d4. So connecting the rooks is great, but checkmate is even better. I'm going for that first. Now, don't think this is not on my agenda. It's high up on my radar. Either I put it there just to put pressure or bishop b7 and target these guys. The only reason I decided to get the queen in the center instead is because I have immediate checks and some mating ideas going on. Thank you for the follow, Kimuls. What happened to the other side of the board? Don't ask me, ask my opponent. Master, thank you for the follow. Silly master. Yeah, Kasai played some fantastic games. These couple of months, well, a couple of months is maybe too much, like three, four months ago. He played some fantastic games. All right, I'm gonna get this bishop out. 
just can't help it. I get it here or there. Something tells me my bishop will be useful on a6 instead. Nah, I'm, I'm going for checkmate, people. I don't even need the queen. And also, once I connected the rooks, what happened, people? I won. That's why you connect them. Connecting them rooks. Yeah, I've been listening to some Kasai's streams. It's very educational. All right, let's roll. Let us roll. Knight f6, that is sort of daring. However, I don't know. It is a little bit iffy. There, knight f3. I am gambling the pawn, however, that king will be a little bit vulnerable in that case. He takes that takes. The wise one, thank you for the follow. But the name of this opening, it's called the Alakine's defense. Now, if you were looking for F4s, in the opening, you might not find it. It's one of my little pet ideas, which are quite interesting. Knight a5, trying to just get rid of my fellow over there. Well, enjoy. I am going for the quick castling and will try to punish this king for being in the center. Okay, d4, I do want to build it still. So the compensation that my opponent has is the bishop pair. So why didn't I play h3? Ah, shame on me, shame on me. Ah, that makes me a little angry. c3, just bolstering. I could have gone bishop a3, e3 that is. h3, gonna ask where this bishop is going. There, all right b4, so there's no c5. And it is time for me to get my guys out. We need to. Knight d5. Okay, that's a Good old move. And that knight a3 is sort of weird, but I didn't want to allow knight there. Okay, I see what you want. You want to play c5? No, not on me cards. Yep, um, this has been famously featured in the match between Carlson and Nakamura with Carlson playing the Alakine, which is surprising as I do recall Nakamura playing the Alakine himself. There, knight e4. Always move forwards. That can't really hurt. It can, but usually it doesn't. Knight g3, let's bother that bishop. There. I wanted to go here so I can attack, but that bishop is doing some fine business. Holding it all together. Okay. I think I'm even gonna start rolling with the pawn, just getting rid of that guy. Let's go h5 immediately. Never hurts unless it does. Exactly. Exactly correct. Takes, let's take. The black isn't doing too badly, but I have a connect for. And if Mr. 
Rosen is correct, that shouldn't be a bad news. I hope he's correct, otherwise I'm not happy. I d5, okay. I see what you want, what you really, really want. I'm gonna kick ya, kick ya out. That knight was just chilling too much on that square, also defending that pawn. And none of those information really suited me. Gonna go rook a7, bother the pawn. And that is a combo you want to have. Rook and knight are great people. What is connect for? It's a famous game. And also one of the catchphrases of Mr. I am Rosen. I am not Rosen, by the way, but he is. Okay. Let's take this. Let's take that pawn. You thought you tricked me. But who tricked who? I tricked you because your queen is hanging and the knight is hanging. Ha! I tricked you back. Pita, thank you for the follow. Who tricked who? I tricked you. And I'll take the b6 pawn as well. And that feeling feels just swell. Push it. Push that pawn down. Who's the biggest trickster in town? Who's the biggest trickster in town? Me. All right. Bye bye, Rook. Bye bye. Because I go knight d6 and I push. So, whenever you get tricked, there's always a slight smidgen chance of a counter trick. Yeah, Charlie was on a mission. It exactly Miss Lethal. By the way, guys, if you are interested in becoming the Ultra Tricksters Club, then you might want to join us chess weebers. Eh, that doesn't sound good. And I don't want to encroach on the Biebers. So, the Chess Weeb Club. Alright, um, I'm going to go bishop d7, I don't mind. And we're gonna go ahead and develop. Bishop g5, let's castle. And I do have some central control, which means black is more than in the game. C3, A, H6. And this is a typical idea. You're just asking, Monsieur, where will be the vok? Okay, you put pressure on the pin, bishop. Um, I will play A5. So my rook can get via the 6th rank. Also, I want to go rook E8. And if I can double up, I will be a happy person. Okay, rook e8, always put your gas on open files. I do not want to turn into a Dr. Seuss of chess, but maybe it's unlikely to be stopped. Okay, queen b6, what about that pawn? We do have a Lee chess team, yes, we do. Let me give you the link for that one. Here it is.
Okay, queen e2. But queen e2 runs into something that you should never do. The power of the rook. And that's why you don't want to face the wrath of these younger and less pawn-worthy heavy bait guys, such as the rooks. It's worth five. Your queen is worth a heck a lot. So that's not a good dealio. All right. Um, could take this way, but I'm going to take this way. Take this way. Take it. The knights are sort of more of a defenders at the beginning of the game. Later on, it, began, it can become an attacker. However, in this specific case, it's better to keep it that way. But, ticky tack toe, tactico. We're going to give a check. And now, suddenly, the MVP of the middle game becomes the MVP of the whole game. Casper, thank you for subscribing. The tier one sub is over five months on a four month streak. And the sad part is that if you take this way, I'm gonna munch on that lady. I'm gonna just destroy it over there. It's gonna lose because I take everything. And if you take with the queen, then there's rook e1. And according to the rules of chess, it is a back rank mate. there and rook to the e1 let me double check i guess i got the two and mate yep so this would be a back rank mate if the bishop wasn't there but the pawn on h2 however the bishop takes away that hiding square and now it is over because it's rook e1 the king has nowhere to go and nowhere to run to So IQPs are tricky. They're not bad at all because you get active piece play as you've seen in this game and the previous ones. By the way, if you would compare chess to some other genre, sport, etc, etc, what would you compare it with? I will give you some options. But obviously, your choice ain't bad ever. So, all right, let's just go E4. There, oh, we're doing this again. Okay, okay. And then F3. You've got something for archery. You do archery. Group C4. Let's bother this guy. Okay. H3. Ask this bishop to kindly leave the premises. Takes there, all right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right, C3. Chess to archery in what ways? In what ways? All right, let's take this, and I'm gonna take on there. Let's take this guy. I castle first. Doesn't make any difference there. Let's castle. This this uh, this experiment has failed terribly. Pretty much, pretty much not what I wanted. F four. I'm not saying it's a sport. 
zero space chess i'm sad sport or anything else you would say dota what way is booboo mall for me it's more like playing the guitar really because if you don't create blisters on your fingers and if you don't do the hard lifting the end of the day you suffer the consequences there g5 but then i'll just drop back and the end of the day isn't that hanging ah that's the counter trick wants to play bishop c5 but i have knight a4 and then de and just capture everything blisters hard lifting sounds a lot like boxing yeah it could be ticks and notice that doesn't work no more my knight was over there covering that. Snooker. Why snooker? What's so tactical about snooker? Boxing. So boxing won. Let me see the results. Boxing, playing the guitar, swimming, singing, Singing has been shunned. You guys don't like singers? Really? Are we going down like that? Um, what are you explaining there? Oh, I know, I know. Um, your mind has to be strong. You need skill, study, and a lot of free time to train. Yeah, that is just like chess. So Boomwall then, maybe Dota might be quite similar. All right, let's see. E4. Let's do some more dragon. If I can. C4, but that sort of gives me this square, which I will graciously occupy. G6, again building the dragon formation. And why does sort of a move shy from taking control of that square? Morning, Grinifwin. Bishop d3, knight f6. Notice I want to go and castle as quick as I can. Roman Proches, thank you for the follow. Let's castle. And the good thing with Fianchettos that your king is safe. Now, you might think otherwise. However, 90% of the times, you will have a tough time getting made at Bubumol. Thank you for the follow. Rook e1, knight d7, and now you activate that bishop. You're late, but you've said it's a dance. Explain yourself. Listen here. I want to know your take. All right. You're going to do a double fianchetto. B4. Okay. All right, so far, I'm just playing normal moves. I'm not rushing anything. Just make sure there's communication between those guys. I'm not going to go knight d4. That's kind of nice. b5 sort of helped me because I want to have open bishops and open diagonals for my folks. How was... I think I missed the snooker comparison. There, let's take that. Okay, takes. And even though my bishop got closed in, who has a pawn in the middle? And in fact, I'm on the fourth already. Knight e5. Mostly attacking pawns and pieces. 
Last but not least, some pieces. I did receive it, but I'm in a game right now, use some username. So if I didn't read it out loud, that is the reason why. Okay. I'm gonna take this, play e5. And there are some mysteries in chess, by the way. One of the mysteries, why would you close up the position if you have bishops? Well, you know, it's time to tune in and get the Twin Peaks soundtrack running. However, you close up the position so you can open it up later at your finest hour. Username is saying, no, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure you knew. Yep, I do know. With all due respect, boxing has a lot of unpredictable intangibles that chess doesn't harbor. Ha! Like what? Like what? All right, so now I'm opening it up. So I was being a little bit defensive, but after defense, comes the counterpunch. Ha, I even used a boxing term. What a pro. What a pro. Listeners, the connection between boxing and chess is the same across all 1v1 competitions. Really? Really? I could go queen g5. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm targeting that fellow over there. Probably. I've built it up a bit better, but I don't know. Obviously, boxing is not equaling chess, but in some respects, there are similarities, I think. There, knight g3. Let's start rolling, 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 uh, rolling, rolling. Down the board. Now there bishop b5. I might even slip inside over there to g7 and go for the attack. Ooh, my opponent is sneaky. Sneakily trying to set up c5 check. I don't appreciate that though. That's rude. That is rude. That is high level rude. Okay. All right, it is time for the typical sacrifice. You think tennis is pretty similar? Yes, but for that argument, I would also say that, hey, many 1v1 sports are similar. You've yet to discover my musical talents. Have you been watching me these couple of years? Actually, year, because that was just one year. Decades, decades by now. Flattering, flattering is going on. People, they're trying to flatter me and they don't care that I went for the Petrosian sacrifice. Shame, shame. Such a shame. Let's see. If I could start rock and rolling with my f pawn, I will be quite happy with my chances. Takes, okay. Takes, takes, takes. I wonder if I can take and push. I don't think I can do that. Let's take. I could do a connect five, but I'm more of a Tetris pawn guy. 
Um, I love the Tetris pawns more. I'm sorry. Tennis, you get the initiative with a serve. That is very much true. Okay. Let's start rolling. Boom. Shakalaka. And checkmate might be on the menu. Soon to be on the menu. Menu. Bishop b5. And Tetris pawns are rare. But they're good. Loving those Tetris pawns. And notice these guys are just straight up chilling in some remote island while we are going at it on that king. Some big attack is Roman. Okay. Could take. Hmm. Just trying to find a decisive move, which does take a bit of time. Okay, let's go rook f6, just bringing the rook over. Let's try this one. Okay. Maybe this is a little bit iffy. Just a little bit iffy. On the other hand, my opponent can't move. This is a complete paralyzation. Queen h5 is quite a threat. This bishop is strong. King moves here. You have an issue. This is just mean? No, it's not being mean. You're being aggressive. Thank you for the host, by the way. I don't know who did that. B6. I don't know what you want there, but I wanted to checkmate. And all hail the Tetris pawns, the Tetris pawns, the Tetris pawns, all hail the Tetris pawns. Now I'm winning. I don't know, that didn't even rhyme and it wasn't the same song, or was it? No. Not sure, but mate is mate and that's what matters. I think boxing and chess are two sports where offense is more important than defense. You can't be too passive. Thank you for thy raid. Okay, what? Oh, that's sneaky. Man, that was a tricky move. Um, I'll take this. I'll take that. Maybe I'm messing it up. Maybe I'm messing it up. Okay, e2. Am I, am I messing this one up? Maybe I'm going insane here. Oh no. Oh no. Ay, 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 ay. Six. Getting tricky, 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 tricky. Oh, 
Oh god. Oh god, 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 god. Queen g4. Got to move in. Got to move on in. I got to move on in. Okay. Six. <clears throat> Getting tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. But I mean, if I could, I would love to take on G3. All right. <clears throat> you waiting you're waiting for me you're waiting for me i can see Waiting for mate and the mate is nigh. You don't even have to try. Checkmate is the way to go. Checkmate is the way to go. Checkmate is the way to uh, go. Yes, sir. Uh, sweet Carolina. We made it. And if you thought that concentration isn't the one that pays off, you were wrong. These are tense moments. I mean, this is obviously not Kramnik Anand World Championship match, which you're watching. However, however, there are moments when nobody has time left. So this is what you normally have. This is the level of tension that you see at Super GM level. They don't have time and it's not decided. So, just warning you, that's how it is. All right. Okay, let's have a bit more time this time. By the way, people, if you're interested, we do have some beautiful, beautiful stuff on our YouTube if you like to learn the King's Indian and such that is something that I would check out as per usual it's always posted right there Knight F6 and guess what this time I am the one facing the isolated pawn so the point is if your opponent has an isolated pawn you want to block it so it cannot really move forward there okay um, I could take, I don't think I'll take, I think I'm just going to start attacking from afar. Whoa, that's brave. I'll move my king. What is going on? What is going on? Now, I believe in miracles, but I don't believe in this one. Long. I mean, short castles. Okay. Well, king safety. He, what? I can't castle. Well, how could I forget that? That's funny. This is actually funny. Um, what? What the heck? 
All right, knight c6, counterattack. Chess and poker are kind of similar too because you kind of have to think ahead. Yep, sort of like that. Takes, and takes d5. So once your king is stuck in the center, which I was, I'm not used to for some reason, in that case, you will have to face the facts and face the music. So you should keep as many pawns in front of it as possible. Yeah, I did. I know. I know. I did. But, you know, sometimes you can't resist the chess principles. They're there and you don't want to ignore them. You know, it's when someone who you know comes your direction, you want to say hi, right? Bishop f4. Okay. This is so annoying. This is so annoying. All right, let's just go b6. Develop. And that's one of the things that you should do. Develop your pieces. You don't know how to count, but your mom's an accountant. Develop your pieces. Your king is in the center and your rooks are not connected. Duh, connect your pieces. Develop them as well. Doing well. Thank you for dropping by. There, man, my opponent is so multi generous, just giving me stuff left and right. Left and right. Okay, can I go here and here? Um, yes, answer is yes. The reason I go this way so my king can actually hide away from all these nasty checks and stuff which was sort of annoying but i'm up a piece so at the end of the day if i don't get made it i'm just enjoying my time by the way just letting all of you know after this one we are going to have a game analysis Thank you for the raid, chillin' with Zig. Hey, Frostbite, what's up? So, we've done some daring, daring gameplay so far. Second thing that I will want to do is look at my sub's beautiful games. So if you're a sub, you get that extra perk of having your game analyzed. I know, I know, it's fantastic. And it is, it is, you'll see, it'll be fun. Who are the lucky people who get those games analyzed? You shall see after this game. And my king looks funky, but that funky monkey will walk back through the window. And back to h6. Now, if I would have problems with my mental health, I would go king f4. And I don't want to do that because my king would be sort of cut off with my pieces. Now, I also blocked this check and my rookies are connected. I'm happy. I am happy. Thank you for the follow. M bet D B G three trying to check me. You are trying to check me. Right? All right. So when you're up a piece, it makes sense to exchange rocks. So I'm going to exchange it. 
Could I do it before? No, I couldn't because the rooks weren't communicating. Now, I know some of you think that chess players are lunatics, and some of them are. Okay, I can go king g4. Can I go king g4? I'll go king g4. Why did I do that? That's a mystery. That is a mystery. Actually, it's a very cool move. A brave one for unnecessary reasons. Anyways, what I was about to tell you is that in chess, there is something special. There was a world champion who was talking to his pieces. Yep, I ain't kidding. I ain't kidding. He was talking to his pieces. And guess what? That's why he became world champion. And that's the whole point. You need communication between these folks. Lol, you guys thought that this game will last short. No, my opponent will take its time. It's his, him, them, whoever they are, they'll take their time. And they should. It's their game. They play it the way they want to play it. Was it me? No, it wasn't me. It was Smyslov who learned to talk to his pieces. And that's what you need to do. And that's what chess is all about. Communications. Did you know that? That chess is communication? I might seem out of touch, but it's true. My dudes, thank you for the follow. Rook d5. Okay, I'll take this for shores. All right, let's walk in there. There, no mate, no nothing, no nothing, okay. And then I'm the one setting up mate with my king. So my king is turning into true warrior. True warrior kings. The king in the end game is what? What is that king? Tell me, tell me. All right, the rook goes there. My rook goes here. Put it on the open file and I might Mow down those pawns. An attacking piece. That could be one as well, Lunde. King F1. You're trying to run. Really? Really? You think you're going to run somewhere? You ain't running, my boy. You're gonna stay right there. Right there. There, all right. Let's get in with our guys. No running today. Exactly, Palacciosito. No running. Stop. Look at the sign. No running. Rook move there. Okay. Bishop F3. And this king is boxed in. Can't move. Can't move no more. Let's see how this good old poll is going. The king in the endgame is boss. Has four votes. And Amazon, no, says Chet and has one vote. Warrior King has seven. And a shogun is nine. All right. All righty. Okay. That's Maraud.
Rocky Mountain Chess says, yes, chess is communication. There's a story on the board. Correct. One must look for it. There are two com competing storylines trying to be told between white and the black. Rook e2. Let's keep this king hammed in. That is el importanto. <clears throat> Rook there. Bishop g4. That's bishop e6. Counter attacking that rook. Okay, bishop e6. And that is Hangen. Hangen in the end. I'll take that. And that's why it's good to have an active king. Now we are deep in endgame territory. I'll be just ready to pick on up all those pawns. Warrior king. Yay for the warrior king. Oh, I think I didn't read the whole bit by Rocky Mountain Chess. For that, I do apologize. It's a story on the board. One must look for it. There are also two competing storylines trying to be told between white and black. Thank you, GM Borosh. It's sort of like that. Yep. And now my king actually is going to collect what is belonging to me. Taking all those pawns. And... An extra queen is going my way. I'm gonna go queen king f4. Just heading this way. Also, let's take that pawn. There. Okay. Let's go here. There, let's take it. There. Alright. Let's take. There. Move here. You can just go bishop e2. Oh, king f4. This is a typical way. You do an opposition and they can't come closer. You waltz over there. You don't want that square to be given to your opponent. And it's game over. All right. You guys know what time it is? Do you guys know what time it is? Indeed, it is time for game analysis. So the first game is between Empty Lum and Listen Here. Also, we are not going to cheat and not going to see the moves because we want to get better. SJB, thank you for the following. All right, so e4, c5, d6. That's another nice way of playing. d4 takes here, bishop g5. Now, this is obviously a big mistake. Knight f6 is obviously trying to capture the pawn, so knight c3 would have been a must. But we will learn that even though you're up a pawn, down a pawn, it doesn't matter. Chess principles are universal. Whether you're up a queen, down a queen, up a pawn, down a pawn, and with two rooks versus a lady. All right, here takes here. A6. A6 I like. Sort of taking away this idea of getting checks. So let's stop here and observe. What did black achieve and what does white have as some sort of compensation? Because there is some sort of compensation going on in this position for white. Also, listen here, TBA, if you're here still, do feel free to get your input in what you thought, what you were thinking. That does help us gauge your ideas. So Puzzle and Puzzle said white has a better development. Hey Tristam, 
Edgar's in black has a nice centralized knight, while white has not really much to show. That's not true. White actually has some extra perks. White is ahead of development. So, when you're playing the game of chess, you've got to assume stuff. Even though white is down upon him, probably is just a mistake, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be compensation out of nowhere. If you just count the pieces in the middle, there's one black piece on e4 and two white ones. That means white is ahead. White has a bit of a lead in development. So if you know that your opponent has a little bit of a lead in development, what you should be your second goal. Just was typing out the fact that white is in the lead. With development, obviously down with the pawns in the long run should be lost. Develop pieces. You've got to catch up with development. Bishop d3. So where would you put that knight? Or would you move that knight at all? You're going to learn and I'm going to ask. Where? And why? Where would you put that knight or would you move that knight at all? So white does what white has to do. You've got to develop. If you're down upon, your big hope is that you can attack my king. Bishop f5 is a no-no because that square is covered by the knight. This knight is actually quite strong. That's why I plays knight f3, knight d4. Bishop f5 is not a move. You would lose that. Alright, so far I see you guys are thinking about moving the knight to c5 or f6. And d5 has a fair share of votes. And the queen a5 is kind of creeping up. Yeah, but you don't want to give up a bishop just willy-nilly. That's not a good thing. Probably knight f6, says sjb, to keep a piece on the king's side. That's a very good point. C d5. Why would you guys want to play d5? So one of the things that you need to do is to communicate. You always have to communicate your ideas. Not necessarily to your opponent, but to yourself. Because most of the moves you make has to have a purpose. If it doesn't have a purpose, it's probably wrong. So knight c5 won because it gains a tempo, says puzzles and puzzles. d5 is a good move for white. I don't get the point, but it is a black move, so I don't get it. Anyways, Knight on c5 doesn't block a pawn and threatens white's bishop. What pawn does it block, Palacio Cito? Which one you're referring to? So anyways, black played knight c5 here, which is not a bad move. It hits the bishop, and every exchange when you're up a pawn is a good thing. Honestly, my take would have been knight f6. So if you guys are happy and you would have picked knight f6, Congratulations, you made a GM move. Why would I play knight f6 versus knight c5? Well, if you go knight c5, you attack that bishop. But 
you can see your king side is getting sort of barren and it doesn't really have defenders anymore. For example, if I go knight f6, I control all these squares where the queen could go to. The only square that white queen can go to is f3, so I'm going to use these red colors. When you go knight c5, hit this bishop, this queen can actually go f3 and h5. Obviously, this is still protected by the bishop, but that was sort of a joke. Anyways, in this case, oftentimes you might get checkmated on h7. So the downside of moving your knight away from the king side is that you're creating potential weaknesses over there. Now d5 is also an interesting move. The only reason I don't like this one is that you're making a pawn move when you should be trying to develop. So I would have played knight f6 and something like g6 or e6 depending on your mood. And that's kind of the interesting part of chess. There is no clear solution. There are like grandmasters who think and believe in solutions. Big names are Anish Giri and Peter Leko. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but so far it seems, and we're sort of leaning towards that these days, that there are multiple solutions in chess. It's possible to play Fianchetto style, but you can play it differently. It doesn't matter. Even the computer often says it is the same value, same pawn value, if you play g6 or e6. Knight c5. And again, the other thing, and the last thing that I'll say about knight f6 is it is flexible. Flexible moves are important in chess because it keeps your opponent guessing. Do they know if you're going to play g6 or e6 or even e5? No, they don't. They have no idea what you're going to do next. When you play knight c5, one thing is for clear and for sure, you have committed your knight to c5 and it is for certain that queen h5 will be a possibility. Knight b3, trying to provoke. Knight d3, c takes d3. And there's another thing that you should keep in mind whenever you play chess. How many moves should you make with one single piece in the opening? One or rarely two, yes. And how many moves did this knight make? Thousands upon thousands, I mean four. Four. And there's nothing wrong with exchanging, however, you invested in that knight with moving it around. And once you capture that it, it's gone, and suddenly, how many pieces do you have developed? None whatsoever. Your development is back to zero. So the score is now 2 0 in development in favor of white, and black is 0. Again, nothing. Zilch. Takes. Although in this situation, this was still probably one of your best moves. Although e6 might be an idea just to try to castle. Anyways, you took b5, and b5 is not good. What's the problem with b5 here? And then we move on a bit deeper in the game. What's wrong with b5? MTB Chris, thank you for gifting subs to the channel. I mean sub, my bad. If you've been gifted a sub, please be thankful for that kind gift that was given to you by MTB Chris. Problem with b5 is you run into the attack. So one line of thought when you play chess is 
not to open up files, ranks, anything, then you have nothing developed. So in that, keeping that in mind, that is, what should we play here instead? What should we play instead? By the way, if you have been joining and you're just new subscriber to this channel, do check us out on Discord where you can post games and we will talk about it and we learn how to get better. Knight c6 is a great move, getting a knight out. That's a fantastic move. Very well spotted by Anano Keiji. And you guys love to play g6 here. And again, why you are missing that knight? g6, black can face the wrath of this evil bishop on d4 in this case. And that's the problem. Bishop d4, and it's niffy. Now it is a problem. You can't put your bishop there. It's just going to get taken, and you never want to touch the f pawn because then there'll be weaknesses all around. And I promise you, you wouldn't be better. Thank you for gifting another sub, Chris. It's to Alexander Sh Alexander's horse. So knight c6 would be a very good move, stopping that and also developing a piece. The other move is e6, playing Scheveningen style. But that's a different topic. Nah, <laughs> here's another one. You didn't have to, but thanks again. Anyways, take stakes. b5 is dangerous because you always have to check out for queen f3s. Now you can still block it, but it would have been kind of nasty still. Knight d2. Bishop b7, that's good. Developing the bishop, fiancadoing, queen c2, knight c6. So far, so good. However, will black castle alongside? Nope. The answer is nope. It's a high level nope. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna castle queenside. So it's all good and dandy that you're developing your pieces here. I see nothing wrong with that. In fact, those are fantastic moves. But your king is sort of still in the middle feeling uncomfortable. And chess is about making your monarch happy. If your king is sad, you are sad. So for a future reference, keep that in mind. Castles, rook c8, still fine. But this king is sad. Queen d1. e5. Now that's good. Glimmer of hope. Also taking some central squares. Which is good. So, so far so good. King h1. f5. I've got a couple. Couple of problems with that f pawn move. One is. Don't move that f pawn ever. I mean don't move it. Especially if your king is in the middle. If you castled, okay, you might be forgiven. But moving it now? Hmm. Hmm. Don't do that. You, you were like, why did you do that? Really? So let's try to make a better move. By the way, I am just trying to teach us, you guys, how to play a bit better. You know, sometimes we make, make mistakes. I make mistakes. Everybody does. I've seen Grandmasters. I've seen Kramnik blunder made in one. So mistakes is part of this game. You think I've never played F5 in my life? Of course I have, but I learned that it will have consequences. Yep, bishop b7, and then you can castle niftily and just enjoy 
your fab time. The problem with f5, it weakens this king in the middle and also you're inviting this nasty check. None of those things that you want to deal with. And there's a good point there. It's all about your thought process rather than the moves. So if we're looking at your game, definitely give your thoughts. It's important for me to understand your thought process and it helps you develop becoming a better player. F4, very strong move by your opponent saying, hey, your king is in the middle, I'm gonna strike. Not strike, strike as not working, in fact, is getting and giving a new job to this rook on f1. So this is sub games. So if you are a subscriber, you are welcome to send in terminal oil. Thank you for the follow. So yeah, just to finish my thoughts and response. Yeah, I'm analyzing games of my subs. All right, f4, e4. Now e4 is a little panicky. And in chess, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is to stay put and recognize your weaknesses. Your weakness is the f5, f5 pawn. How can you defend that? Lauren, welcome. And thank you for subscribing with a Twitch Gaming Prime. By the way, please post your game on Discord or if you have it somewhere else. Mostly on Discord because that's where I could find it much more easily. And welcome to the channel, by the way. And if you do, please post it in the chess hashtag. So how can we defend this f5 pawn? I think, listen here, realize that, yo, yo, that's a weakness. I'm going to push the pawn. And that is sort of a first reaction that you get. But let's think about it. Let's think of a different way of defending. In fact, there's three ways of, actually four ways of defending it. And I'm curious which one you guys think is better. G6, Queen D7, E takes F4, or Knight E7. I'm also happy if you guys tell me which one is the absolute worst. Because believe it or not, knowing which move is the absolute most horrendous thing on this planet can help you make the better move. We are not adding E4. So E4 is out of that bunch. I was referring to the ones I posted in the good old, what is this called again? Poll, that good old poll. E takes F4 is the absolute first, says Miss Lethal, allows whites to control the center after Bishop F4. Hmm, have you looked around with the alternatives? Have you looked around with the alternatives?
So, the absolute most horrendous move here is a knight e7. Why? Because you are actually hindering your own development. Your king will be in there and cannot move at all. It's just terrible there. So it's not something you want to do in that case. It's just bad news and that's what happens. 97 is horrendous. Is horrendous. And as we all know, and if you're new here, fear shadowing is fine. And it's in fact a pretty good move. You create a chain of pawns and bishop g7 castle comes and you're happy. That's a very good move. g6 is amazing. Queen d7 is amazing. And in fact, one of you were cor correct. EF is probably the second worst. You don't want to help your opponent get ahead. So if you said 97 is terrible, you were right on the money. Now e4 happens, we do panic, but usually you can just go ahead and defend. You don't have to close positions immediately. Just make normal moves, defend your pieces, and more times than not, they're good. DE, knight B4. Now here comes the tragedy, because this is not good. You don't want to let your opponent go full Pac-Man on you. A3, which is a weird move. Knight D3, but you're missing this nice little tactical shot of Knight C2, hitting that rook and hitting that bishop. So whenever you see your opponent's pieces being a little loose, that bishop was undefended. So first thing first, always try to recognize if there's something that's undefended in your enemy camp. And then from there, it's much, much easier to identify those targets. So knight c2, and that would have been very good. Knight d3 takes queen f6. Finally, at least you're bringing your queen over. And you're doing okay-ish, but you did give up too many pawns. But okay, knight f3, should be e4, trying to defend your guys. And that's a good move, I like it. You're defending a strong piece. It's a good move, should be e4. Takes rook e1, and that's a bad mistake, which you capitalize on. Takes rook c2, get that tank on the second rank. Rook d1, rook g2, and that's a beautiful move. That's a beautiful move. Can anybody tell me why rook g2 is so strong? That was a very nice spot. Obviously, we're kind of sad still with this king being in the middle. However, rook takes g2 is a marvelous move. But why is it so strong? Okay, I take. That's the question. What happens if takes? Okay, queen g4. But what if I go queen g3? And I defend this. There is this a little touch of bishop takes f3 check. And you can't take your pinned. And if they would try to take the queen, this is what you do. And this is for the OTB times when chess will be back. And it won't be online. You stop the clock and you ask for the arbiter saying, My opponent played a terrible move. Naughty, naughty boy. Naughty, naughty girl. That is illegal. And don't, don't panic. You are entitled to stop the clock. Obviously, write down the move. That's important. Because it's something that you keep in mind. Hello, people. Right now, 
we are in game analysis mode. We are not playing anymore today. So bishop f3, if queen f3 happens, you raise your hand, say, arbiter, arbiter. Naughty, naughty things is happening over here. Obviously, if you're 59 years old, you don't have to add the naughty, naughty part. If you can, it's not in the FIDE code, you can't. You can add that, but probably it's uncalled for. Yep, write it down, stop the clock, call the arbiter. And don't get bullied. Whenever you're super young, they tell you, oh, you're not, you can't do this. Don't listen to anybody. Listen to your heart and listen to the arbiter. Those are the two things we listen to as chess players. Arbiters, hearts. Those are the two things. And yep, at the end of the day, if the king moves, you take on d1 and you're chilling. You're up a rook and it's winning. Apart from that, if the king moves, let's say here, you take here and queen g2 mate. Now, talking about arbiters, you cannot take over here because our king is in the middle. And that's kind of the problem. That's why you castle. I'm not joking. That's why you castle, so you can give mate in this case. You would have bishop takes f3 checkmate. However, in this situation, your opponent is going to call the arbiter and say, not gonna happen, folk. Not gonna happen. But obviously, queen f3, queen g2 is mate. So all in all, a fascinating game. Very exciting. I like the way you fought. However, the only thing that was lacking is development. Your king was in the middle all the time. And your king doesn't want to be there. Remember, your king needs to be pampered. Let's see how it ended. Yep, that's almost how it ended. King f2 was played here and checkmate. So basically the same ending. All right, game numero due. Or dva, depending which country you're in. You know too much already, so don't remember it. Delete, delete, and look at this with fresh eyes. Lenny is saying, I almost got in trouble in high school when I said out loud that one of my teammates was in check and made an illegal move. So one of the things that's important to remember, you cannot, you cannot talk in someone else's game. They have to see it and they have to report it. It's a one-on-one -on -one game. You have no say in that. Only if you're the arbiter can you say, oh, that's illegal. Apart from that, it's between the two players. So this game was played between Edgar Saint and Stokes. E4, strong start. E5, F4. Any King's Gambino fans over here? Fine game, by the way. Listen here. Fine game. The Ruy Lopez? Yep, the Ruy Lopez is better, Lauren. But for the Romantics, F4 is not such a bad move. You're a fan of not accepting the King's Gambit. Hopkins. King's Gambit is your forty. Okay. EF, Knight F3. Knight F3 was played. Does anyone remember a certain grandmaster who you might see talking about sports, comedy, philosophy, who once said that there is a best move in this position? What did he say? What did this mysterious GM 
suggest. Also, I wonder who that mysterious GM could be. Lauren saying, I always accept the King's Gambit if I'm black, followed by G5, and even playing into the Muzio. Wow, you're brave. If it's a King's Gambit, you gotta play a Romantic. That is true. What did that mysterious... Mysterious GM suggest. And I don't want to point fingers who did so. But, also a side note, that Mysterious GM actually agrees with Bobby Fischer. We see D4, but that's the Steinitz. That ain't that good. It's funky, but ain't that good. Guys, guys, I... <sighs> Not remembering it? Oh my goodness. So Bobby Fischer and me said Bishop C4. And as Lauren pointed out correctly, after Knight F3, there's G5, and this is the main, main line. And if H4, G4, and man, many, many moves. However, the point of Bishop C4 is, which I told you guys plenty of times when we were talking about this, is this. If G5 happens, there's a move that you wouldn't be able to make or wouldn't be as successful than in the case of Bishop C4. What is this magical move that is so strong? No, we're not trying to checkmate. We're not banking on an easy trick, people. We're trying to be as positional as possible. And that is h4. And I'll tell you that little secret. So if knight f3, g5, h4, g4, this lady couldn't help out. Fast forward, Fisher land, g5, h4. You go h6, which is normally a good defense, creating this chain of pawns I could take. You can't take back because that rook is hanging, and then this pawn becomes a target. Also, no longer do you have any pawn moves. My queen is right there to hunt it down. So that's the secret of bishop c4, and I'm just letting you guys know bishop c4 is that big idea over there. Anyways, knight f3 was played, the main line, but bishop c4 is probably objectively better. Bishop d6, not the main line, and a horrible move. Here, you've got to go d5 or g5. I mean, there's three moves. You can go h6 and g5, just creating this chain that I was talking about. Go g5 or d5 if you do not want that typical play. Now, bishop c4, Lenny's asking about this check. Now, this looks visually appealing, but one rule of the king's gambit is, if it looks logical and you want to play it, probably you shouldn't play it and it's bad. If this looks logical and looks good, so probably it's just bad. I have king f1, and you'd say, hey, but you can't castle, yes, but your queen is awful and it's going to be chased away in the long run. Like you go here, I go knight f3, immediately hitting on your queen and then I'm also building a center. Let's say you go queen h5, d4 and you're worse, almost worse already because in a move my king will be in safety and I also have the center. So, queen h4, too logical, so you want to play something else, obviously not g5, but something like knight f6 and developing. 
was trying to play d5. Bishop c4 would have been an idea. Now bishop d6 is terrible. That bishop defends that pawn but kills the scope of that honorary French bishop. That it is kind of an honorary French bishop. Bishop c4, knight f6, and here comes the big question. Should we castle or should we do something else? So what are the ideas that pop up immediately? E5, definitely a big idea over here for Carino. However, the big question is, what happens if black goes queen e7? Again, arbiter time if you dare take any of those pieces. So you will need to find a way to punish this move. In fact, there are multiple ways. Queen e2 is nice, it's a good catch, but for future reference, it's good to know that castling often is the key move. Queen e2 is very nice, you're just unpinning, and now one of the pieces is falling, and you're just winning. So when a, your opponent plays something weird in the opening, it makes sense to look around and not just make any random move, even if it makes sense. So e5 here, castles is great, takes, and how can we punish this formation? Bishop takes e5. Notice that the king is in the middle, and that is the key. If that king wasn't in the middle, it'd be problems. I see rook e1. So there's one thing that I do want to remind you guys. Always look for opponent ideas. What tricks does black have on their his her sleeve? What would black play here? All right, so I'm gonna rotate the board, so bear with me for a second. If it's black to move, what would be the worst thing that could happen to white? Queen c5 check, yes. And your bishop is gone. So, keep that one in mind and now try to find the best move. And that's one of these important things. You should look for your own ideas, but check out if your opponent has one. Also, what are we aiming to achieve? Can anybody verbalize that for me? What is our goal? Apart, it, like, I know if you say you want to win the piece, I understand, but what is the method? What, why will we be winning that piece? So knight takes e5, king takes e5. We want the pin, correct. And this is a typical trick. If your opponent's king is in the middle, and there's a queen aligned with it, you always have this deadly pin and can win the game. Now there is still this nice little move, knight e4, just blocking it. d4, you gain the space. Queen e7. Now you want to undermine this knight. Try to undermine that knight with a developing move. So at the moment it's still tense, we didn't win the piece yet. But we're getting there. Knight c3, 
Yes, very good move. The point is they can't take here because this is a check. And this works all the time when the king and queen is aligned. That's a check and that's why it's so annoying. Hey, Gordalification. So the only move here, there's no d5 obviously because you just capture, is f5. However, in this case, as we talked before, if the king is in the middle and they have to play f5, you must be smirking. You must smirk. That's a rule. You see f5, king is in the middle. Mm, no, you don't enjoy that. You hate it. So you have this wonderful move of knight d5. If the queen moves to d6, you can take here and you will win the exchange. Not to talk about the fact that the black is completely without any development. Queen d8, and here comes a beautiful solution. Why to move and win? So let's try to solve this puzzle first. And we talk about other things later. So notice black has all of their pieces in the back rank. So now you've got to look for a way to use time. And in chess, time matters. Boom, baby. Rook takes e4. So the reason you want to take on e4 here and not anything else is because you want to zigzag your queen to e5 as that queen can no longer block with queen e7. So rook takes e4, f takes e4, queen h5, check, and after g6, queen e5. Notice I have gazillion pieces, three, attacking your king. If you move king f8, I'll graciously take your rook and your queen, and it's game over. But if you go king f7, then I have mate galore. If you go here, check here and queen f7 is checkmate so what we need to remember it is basically a clearance sacrifice correct lauren so what we need to remember in the case if your opponent gets these guys over there that this idea of takes takes rook e1 wins now you can also go d3 that also wins but I just wanted to let you guys know that sometimes you can overwhelm your opponent just by continuously attacking the e4 pawn, e4 knight. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that d5 never works. And it doesn't work because we would capture with either the bishop or the knight. I would prefer the knight just because it would set up multiple threats. Anyways, back to the game. So e5 should have been winning. So I know that you can get pinned, but 90% of the time, you are the one who will come up on the top. Knight c3, a normal move, but missing the win. Castles, and e5 no longer really works because the black king castled and there's rook e8 counterattacking. You can't take, and if you play d4, the bishop can move away. And if castles, there's a beautiful move for black. Let's try to find it. Black to move and play. And this is important, especially if you play e4, e5 with black. This is a typical idea. Right at the moment, we are doing game analysis flash aha. Uh -huh. So subscribers send in the games and I look at them. One of the things in chess is that 
you state your moves. You're not asking, can I play this move? Kind of reminds me of that cartoon of that old grandpa playing chess, saying, no. Oh. But that's not how you play chess. You say, hmm. You play like you mean it. You play the move like you believe in your move. You're not asking. You're stating it. Correct, Uncle J. It is D5. One of the funny things and kind of the coolest moves in the E4, E5 positions that you have this attack countered by D5. So if they take, you take on C4. And believe it or not, most of the time, this is great for black because you get the bishop pair and oftentimes these pawns are targets rather than assets in these positions. So again, remember d5 is a typical try and something that you should remember for your future games. Anyways, back to the game. So e5 was a one chance. One moment in the lifetime of a chess player. If you play e5 there, you're great. If you don't play e5, then now no longer can you play it. Chess is cruel in this way. d4, bishop b4, that's a very nice move. By black, c6, probably should have taken the pawn. But white does have the bishop pair, so there is some form of compensation even if it's probably insufficient. c6, takes, takes, queen d3, d5, bishop b3. Bishop f5, that's a very good move by black. Eyeing the queen, queen e3 is nice, stepping out of it, rook e8. So far, black's moves were very good. Apart from bishop d6, black's been doing all right so far. Knight e5, very good. You want to block it and you're eyeing the biggest target in chess, the f7 pawn. This is the big target. f6, bishop g3. And when you're just starting out, you always want to move a piece that is being attacked. However, the more experienced you get, you realize counterattacking is just as valuable. Opschmidt, thank you for the follow. So bishop g3 is a nice little touch by Edgar Saint, saying, hey, you can take there, but then I take your bishop. So this is not that bad at all. Sure thing, mg Gustav. So f takes, then rook takes on f5. That's the point of Edgar Saint. So let's stop here and observe, because chess is part playing and observing. So who do you think is better here? Or rather, which side would you take? Which side would you take? And also tell me why, because one of the thing is to talk and say, yes, I love black, blah, blah, blah. But you do have to say something like, I love the color. The color is just so exquisite. That is so exquisite. And I get it. It sometimes is. But in this specific case, you have to prove a stance. Chess is sort of like a debate on a black and white board. You're debating and saying, yo, I think this is fantastic. Um, MG Gustav, please post it on Discord. Under the chess. One, um, white more potential for active pieces and game opening up. Definitely, that is one of the things. White has that potential. Black has that extra pawn and also has 
some pieces that yeah white has the bishop pair which is great and also what black is sort of struggling with is development fe rook takes f5 and that is one of the things that black is sort of lagging so if i was black i would try really hard to get this knight to d7 he takes c takes knight g3 queen g3 so so far the situation has clarified in some way or another however black is still lagging in development but white already has some targets on the king side notice the lag of that lack of that f7 pawn d7 good move rook f1 and i know some of the people don't even mention rook f1 as being such a great move but to be honest with you these little moves make the game rook f1 and you immediately have them on the file nicola thank you for the thousand cheers we're just looking at subscriber games and we're extolling that doubling on the f file why is it so good because it's restrictive the knight can't go to this juicy square of e4 because in that case i'll take and you're pinned you can capture white with all your guys that pin is too strong also rook f8 would be an idea however again the strength of this doubling at the end of the day knight would be forced back to f8 so queen b6 a good move connecting the rooks c3 defending now rook f7 looks tempting right I would get my tractor on the 7th and I would have a double attack. However, there is one thing that overrides a double attack and that is checks. This check not only gives this king a hard time, it also defends this square. He moves then, you move the knight away and voila, from a double attack to nothing, you're just down the pawn and struggling. No, doubling was a fantastic choice, Edgar Singh. C3, that's defended. Rook e7. And here, White plays a fantastic move that definitely needs praise. So it's White to move and play. Now, don't expect some beam boom fantastic winning move. I don't think there is one here. However, Think about it this way. This king is sort of lonely. The lady is out there hunting for pawns, so it doesn't really have too many defenders. But on the other hand, these guys don't have, like, those guys are shielding the king. So so far it's not that bad for black however if we can find a way to create targets on the king side we will have some good chances to break through and i'll give you some options here d6 engage one h4 bishop c2 and in this moment i do want to mention something so oftentimes some high titled players do talk down to others i totally disapprove of that because chess is an objective game if you make a good move, it doesn't matter if you're a contractor, a businessman, a president, or whoever you are made the move. You might not be titled. You might be an engineer, an astronaut, doesn't matter. The quality of the move still stands. The computer will still say it's the best or it will still approve of its quality if 
there's a quality behind it. So again, lots of praise for this move by Edgar Saint because this one was very, very nice. Let me see what you guys voted. So I see bishop c2, which makes a lot of sense. Queen d6. But what I actually really like by white is that it's a deep idea. What were your ideas when you played h4? And I'll explain why this is so strong. h4 is a super nice move. To be honest, this is the best move I've seen for quite a while. And you can tell, h4 is not that move that rushes into battle. Not that queen d6, let's say, is that bad. It can be very strong. But I like the fact that h4 is patient and is strategic in nature. So this move is actually preparing to push this pawn up to h6 and set up some mating ideas versus that king. Yep, Edgar saying, so that's roughly the same thing, trying to open up the king. Rook e8, h5, and this is very nice. After h6, there'll always be some mate threats on the g7 or mating patterns, and back rank becomes an idea. Rook e3, rook g4, rook takes c3, but pawns don't matter when the king is in trouble. Rook f7, and this time with queen g4, there are no more queen takes d4 ideas anymore. You've got to deal with these. Rook g3, queen takes g3, queen d4, king h1, already it's winning. Rook e4, queen b8 check, which is quite pretty. Nice final touch by Edgar Saint. And this is what I'm talking about. If you connect your pieces, go for these strategic ideas, you will be able to play beautiful games. This was a beautiful touch at the end. The queen is taboo. You can't block. So Stokes took after rook f8, it's checkmate. Very nice game. Very nice game by Edgar Saint. Definitely one of the things that could have been done earlier is to look around if your opponent fell into some trick. You've got that one chance of playing e5 forks, but apart from that, this was a beautiful game. So props, props for this one. So let's see. Let's see Lauren's game. Top. All right, you were black. Okay, d4, d5, so it's a 10 minute game. By the way, if we're watching your game, don't fret, always feel free to give me your thoughts, your thoughts that you had when you started. H4 was a fantastic idea. I completely agree, Jim Walker. Anyways, back to this game. Yep, Lauren, it's your game. D5, classic, C4, E6, A3. Now, A3 is a move that ain't doing too much. It actually stops any of these bishop b4 ideas. However, when black faces a3, you can even consider taking. I don't know if you did. You didn't take, but in fact you can take there because in this scenario, e3, c5, a3 is just a waste of move and you get extra time to undermine this pawn on d4. So I think as a future reference, you might want to consider it taking on c4, but obviously that is just one idea. If you play knight f6, knight c3, bishop e7, and if you play it slowly, 
if he actually gets to be useful because it will help promote ideas such as b4 and minority attacks but we'll see what happens h3 that's not a great move castle is just wasting time for your opponent bishop f4 a6 so if your opponent is wasting too much time so plays h3 a3 now if they play one of them it's okay you don't necessarily need to go punish it but in this case you can go ahead and try to punish it so any ideas chat and lauren if you have any ideas now how you could try to punish these moves if your opponent plays on the sides what is the best way to counter counter that I don't know, Keiji. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome. So if your opponent plays on the sides, it makes sense to tag back in the center. So c5 makes a lot of sense here. Notice that knight hadn't developed. In fact, you definitely need a praise for one thing, even though it's the main line. One of the basic rules that I always tell everyone when they start out or just learn chess, always develop your knight first and then the bishop. Bishop f4 isn't that good in this case and I'll tell you why. Because if c5, dc, you can't even consider this move d4. If the knight was on f3, that would never be possible and that's why most of Top grandmasters play knight f3. Pawn takes pawn, followed. Ah, so like that. Yeah, um, the only reason I'm kind of stopping, Lauren, because usually we just tell the move where it goes. So if there's a pawn push, so I don't say d5 to d4, I just say d4. I just always say the final destination of the square. I'm not used to this notation. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just learning. So did you say queen a5? Queen a5 probably runs into b4, and it would make sense because that pawn promotes that. So I would just say the square name. So if I say queen a5, I would write queen a5. Oh, you grew up using descriptive. No problems with that. It's just something I'm very unfamiliar with. So, but I will try my best to understand. Anyways, d4 is strong here and I'll see, you'll see why this is so nice for black. Knight c6. And in case of knight c7, you have a very, very nice move here. I read some of the descriptives, namely Botvinnik's book was a bit of descriptive. There's a very fine touch here. Seemingly we're kind of suffering because this rook is an under attack. However, at the end of the day, there'll be problems that I will have to face. And indeed, the big move is e5. Yes, we lose the rook, but we win a bishop, and at the end of the day, that knight is entombed, and it won't be able to run away at all. And that's kind of a fine touch, something to remember, because even if they double up, you just get out, and because of your queen guarding these squares, and knight b6 taking a b, you're winning, or at least having a very good position with two pieces for the rook. So in a future reference, I definitely think c5 would make sense. So a6, but that's normal. c5, c6. Okay, b3, knight d7, b6, b takes. So... Here, you're slightly worse because of the structure. 
If you have a little less space, your opponent sort of invaded your position. And you have a terrible bishop. So if you have a terrible bishop, how can you get rid of it? And if any of you are interested in these type of positions and how to play this correctly, check out the Kozu Nakamura match earlier on, not the Tour Final, but before that, because they played this position quite a lot. So check that one out and you'll learn how to play this correctly. Yep, and the big move here is to get this bishop out via a6. They go bishop e2, bishop a6. So your opponent is basically trying to build a center, but you're the demolition man. So you're trying to undermine it as much as possible. Now, this is a good structure for white. This is objectively slightly, slightly better for the white player, but you can still play the demolition man and go for a5 and trying to undermine it. But, as you might not know, tension is good for the demolition man. So you don't want to clarify the situation too early as you did, Lauren. You might want to put more dynamite in there so you can blow it up. Also, a side note, if your opponent, let's say, plays something like knight d2, let's say bc, bc, you can even try e5, and that's the other way of blowing up white's center. Yes, you lose the pawn, but you are going to win the pawn back with interest, as you will have a better pawn structure than white does. So a5, bishop a6 is the way to go. You want to undermine it, get rid of your bad bishop, and then you can go full demolition man on white's position. b6, b4, and I think b takes c5 is a little bit early because of that. Knight e4, that's fine. We're trying to find some counterplay. Sadly, we can't play e5 now. There's just too many defenders. At the end of the day, we can't attack the c5 pawn. Knight e4, take 6, f5. This is fine. If in conjunction you could play e5, but I think you will be a few moves short of doing so. Bishop e2, and this is a bad move. If your opponent would have played bishop c4, you're sort of in a trouble because you can't ever go for e5. You've got to go here, and your structure is not too ideal. Five, bishop e2, knight f6, and here again, you should go play the role of the demolition man, try to break it open. Thank you for the follows, guys. Zarkon and B Maximus. B2, knight f6, and that knight is trying to get to d5, which is good by in itself. However, you have such a passive position, I'm not sure it compensates. But let's see what happens. Knight d5. A5. Bishop f6. Takes. Now, that's a terrible move. Even though it takes a good knight, it actually gives up a very strong bishop. So I disapprove of that. I would rather try attacking this pawn or prepare rook b1. Sometimes, oh, this would run into bishop d6, so obviously not that. Let's say here, rook b1, and this would be quite unpleasant for you because of that pressure. Bishop takes, queen d takes. I would even consider taking with the queen because your queen would be just chilling there. It's kind of hard to get rid of it. But he takes d5 is nice. You're trying to create a better structure. You're doing fine. So far, so good. a4, bishop a6, good. But again, apart from this move, which is a fine move, what side can you play on? Where you have more space, right? So if you have more space, what can you do? You have more space on the king's side, correct. How can you use that? Then you can attack there. 
can actually go ahead and play g5. And I know this looks scary, but it's a closed position. And because of that, it'll be kind of hard to stop the f4 break. And believe it or not, we even have this very nice little rover, which will be kind of useful when you're starting to roll those pawns down the board. Bishop a6, bishop d3, very good. You're activating your bishop. Very good positional play. If you would be more aggressive, you could go for g4, f4, but Karpov would approve this plan as well. f3, bishop g5. Okay, f4, bishop f6. Probably you could have probed that rook a bit, closing in that bishop, and then do the same thing. And in this case, you will have much more easier targets and then that bishop would be awful. Bishop f6, knight f1, rook b8. So far, so good. Really like that. You close in the bishop. Ah, you saw that chance. Hope you will double as well. Rook b4, that's fine. Even though I would prefer this. You are dominating here. You are dominating so far. Knight g3, g6, knight e2, queen c7, knight c1, bishop c4, very good. King h1, brilliant. Rook b2, queen c3, g5. Now that is very a la Kainask. You are trying to open it up on the other side. However, when you open up and start playing on both sides, you create some chances for your opponent. If you would have continued building up the rhythm, you don't have to rush. So one of the things that I learned from my own experience, if you have a good position, rule number one, don't rush. You have time. Your opponent can't do anything. Basically, this knight is paralyzed and it can't move. So if you just play h6, go hide, make sure everything is defended. There's nothing your opponent can do. They're just gonna watch, chill, and nothing can possibly happen to you. So g5, I think, is something that you don't need to do. And you're just giving counter chances, basically opening up that bishop. F takes, bishop takes. In fact, your position is so good, you even have a winning shot in this moment. G5 was a great move, still a great move. However, you've got to be accurate in this case. It's black to move and win. Yep, queen G3. And you placed your pieces so well. Everything's on the right track. Queen g3 would have been almost checkmate on the spot. And it slides out. It's very difficult to stop this checkmate. Also, if knight d2 takes gf, you could even play the elegant bishop f1. And there's no way of stopping queen g2 checkmate. So I don't blame you. Oftentimes I would pre-move bishop takes g5, but that's why if you get the chance, just look around for 10, 15 seconds if there's something even stronger. So oftentimes there are better moves than that. But okay, bishop takes g5, bishop f2. Ooh, that's hanging. Oh no, you could have taken that one. F4. Rook f1, again you could take there, queen g3, finally, rook g1, take on e3, good. There, okay. Again, you have this beautiful move of bishop f1, setting up this mate. So one of the things that you need to do is, A, look for hanging pieces. And as I saw, you had plenty of time. You've got seven minutes. 
feel free to use it. Always use time. It's there to be used. I mean, I know. You might be uncomfortable with playing low time, but you know, use it till you have three minutes, let's say, and then you can start playing faster. But it's important to use it because at the end of the day, you will have to find the winning moves when you're close to checkmate. Oh, the long queen move. Oh no. Yeah, that's painful. Long queen moves, believe it or not, is often missed by even grandmasters and super grandmasters. I played Sam Shanklin some time ago and the way I kind of turned it around from a little bit dubious position to even is with a long queen move. That's the move he missed and then it kind of evened out and the game ended in a draw. So in this specific case, again, this is the problem that happened. Yeah, this is painful. Yeah, this happens. Sadly, this happens. Queen moves, long queen moves are often missed. So the only thing I can say, you played beautiful chess. Played really, really well. The only thing that was lagging is taking your time when you already had a beautiful position. So it's one thing to create a beautiful position, but the second thing is to actually wrap it up. And again, one final touch would be this one, six and mate. So we're very close, this sadly happens. So one thing that I would advise you to do is tactics. Lots of lots of tactics. Take your time in the position and on the clock. Yes, yes, Lauren. Apart from that, you did build up the position very well. All right, so this is our second game and then Anano Keiji's game is coming afterwards. All right, so let's... Okay, I don't know who's playing who. Let's see the message. This is a game I played against my brother over the board who's 300 points higher rated. Okay. I know he plays the French, so I didn't go with that. Okay. So. What? And we see a French. French. Okay. So you assume that you're white. Sure thing, Lauren. Great game, and I mean, you played some very nice move there, moves there. So it's sort of a shame that you didn't win it, but I hope you learned your lesson in a good way. And look, you just fix those, you can improve a whole lot. E5, knight f3. Now normally I like f4 because the bigger the center, the better. Bigger the responsibility you have, but hey, challenge accepted. Knight f3, c5, bishop g5. Too direct. You again should go for castling. But okay, it's not like it's terrible. And b6, bc. This guy. I mean, if you take now, there's still knight b5, and that's nasty with rook b1 ideas. They don't blame black for not doing that. In D2. And tactics time, people. It is tactics time. Black to move. And bim, bam, boom. Let's see. Who's the best tactician of the chat today? The problem at the moment is that the queen defends the knight. If you can get rid of that, the situation will be bueno. Indeed, bishop f2 takes queen b2, and you've got a double attack. You can defend both. The queen has 
been removed and this is a check and the black is chillin hardcore chillin all right oh it was actually played so your brother knows it and snoder knows it as well all right so good tacticians in the family and on the internet what could be better queen b2 king d2 Ooh, so if you can lose a knight or a rook prefer the knight instead ticks it should be five okay queen c5 oh falling for this deadly trick i see oh that's nice but does that work i don't think it does i don't think it does king g2 king c1 and king c1 messes it up because it runs into a deadly trick nice trick but it doesn't work why doesn't this work I thought actually there's this, but no. Let's see six takes f6. And you just block it off. Six queen g5. Queen g5 is bad. Whoa, you're winning. Wait, is this winning? We might be winning. Takes bishop takes. You're winning. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's pretty. That's actually very very pretty. Can anybody spot the checkmate here? Queen g5 doesn't work. Doesn't work because the knight is still pinned. Oh, that was a very nice trick. I didn't think that would work, but it did. Nice job. All right, let's try to find the win here for white. Okay, queen e7, I hide my king. Check. So here, obviously, you win the queen. But the question is, how do you checkmate after king g8? Only accepting mate in threes. So mate in three. People made in three. So checks here, 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 and Bishop D five is made. Very beautiful. Nice game. Nice game. Nice game. That trick is nice. That is a very nice game. Did we actually saw all, all of it? There, yeah, this is checkmate. This is quite nice too. I think we didn't. But queen g5 was a bad move. Knight g5. And you can't take because you're pinned. Takes, knight e6. And this should be agony. There, knight b4. Knight e6. Just going to go through this. Okay, and this was just completely winning. I don't know if you won, but definitely a beautiful trick. All right. Very nice idea. Well thought out, MS Gustav. Liked it. And last but not least, let's take a look at Anano Keji's game. All right, so flippity flip the board because Anna was black okay d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight c3 bishop b4 queen c2 castles okay knight f3 d5 still a main line a3 yeah, sorry about that, Ms. Lethal. Next time. Next time it will be the first one. Okay, a3 takes, queen takes c3, 
main line b6. I think d takes c4 is the best move here. Queen takes c4 and then b6. b6, you actually give some ideas. So in this case of b6, there could be c takes d5, which you might want to avoid. Now you transpose back. h6 takes... Okay. Queen takes c7. Whoa. Okay. So as far as I know, c5 pawn sacrifice is one of the main lines. h6 takes takes, queen takes c7. Rook c8, that's good. Queen e5, queen d8. Okay. Queen d8. By the way, Anna, if you have any side notes to the game, let me know. All right, so queen e5. One of the other moves that I would consider is queen g6. It looks a little bit out of touch, but if I can get my queen in there and just sneak closer to that king, that would make my day. Okay, and if knight h4, that's not a big deal. And also, even if you lose the rook, that king is so much in trouble that black is just going to take over. So I think queen g6 is interesting here. Maybe g3, but then you can start rolling with your knights. One of the things that you have to look for here, as I'm pretty sure you know, is to look for a quick counterplay. Yeah, Hoshino is, uh, I think I've heard of her, versus a VFM. So I think Queen G6 would have been interesting in this specific case. Anyways, you played Queen D8, which there's nothing wrong with that, but maybe you had that extra option. E3. And actually, that's kind of the reason why I like this move. In this case, I, you already have pressure on the g2 pawn. You might consider queen c2 and not attacking on b2. Or you could even take, take, and go queen c2 immediately having counterplay. That's why I'm so hyper focused on this move. So you play it queen d8, e3, takes, takes, rook c7. Rook c7. So what did you think about this position at this moment? Can you explain to me? Just a little bit. So what were your thoughts when you played rook c7? And that's very important. It's very important to keep these things in mind. And just keep verbalizing why you did what you, what you did and for what reason. I wanted to try and infiltrate quickly, so get the knight out and double. Mm -hmm. And I guess you can't really go here, because this nice little fork, and that's kind of nasty. Mm -hmm. That looks problematic, okay. The other thing you could try is go knight c6, and if queen e4, then knight a5. Oftentimes this knight would show up and sort of cripple her development and if they and she if she plays knight d2 eventually the piece activity can compensate also sometimes you can exchange off that knight 
for the idea of doubling. Obviously not yet, because you've got to tend for that one. So the other idea that you could have used is knight c6, but rook c7 is a normal move. King d2. King d2 is, I feel, a bit much, but uh, maybe it's not that bad. I think king e2 is better just trying to get closer to the king side. King d2 is putting it right in the open. King d2, knight d7. The king on d2, my spy d senses would go for knight c6, knight a5 with ideas such as that. Knight c6, queen e4, knight a5. And not only will you threaten knight b3 fork, you will also have this idea of knight c4 targeting the b2 pawn. And it will take extra time for her to move that king around. So let's say king e2 could even consider something like queen c8, setting up rook c2, taking control of the file, and setting up that queen a6 check. But okay, you play knight d7, queen b5, knight f6. Okay, so I think your plan is a little slow. For future reference, I think knight c6 and knight a5 is something you should keep in mind. That's a bit better way of playing. It's a bit more aggressive. Oh, you missed it in the game. Oh, I see. So was this a Japanese tournament? You said it earlier, so let me just catch up. Oh, yes, okay. So knight d7, queen b5, knight f6. I guess you're heading towards e4, which is a legitimate plan by in itself. However, it might turn out to be slow if rook c1 is played and the king can run away. I don't know if she did, so she didn't. But rook c1 would be very close to the refutation because after that, you don't really have that much compensation for that pawn. So I think this plan of yours of knight d7, knight f6 was a little bit slow. Play the queen d3, rook c8. Again, you could have been a bit more aggressive with queen d5, and now knight d4 can show up. But okay, rook c8 by itself ain't bad. Rook c1, queen d5. And now you get really good counterplay. You might even start getting that infiltrating square. Oh, you live in Japan. You're British. Okay. So knight e4 is a big threat. Queen d5 is a very nice move. Sometimes you might even have that check. And now you have big, big play. Because your opponent cannot just willy-nilly exchange everything. Because you have this check and it's even game over. If here, the knight f2 check and you're winning. Rook takes, rook takes, king e2, knight e4. Very good. Knight e4 is a nice move. Sort of like a first reaction. Like you would play knight e4 a tempo. But on a second thought, let's stop here and look around. Is there anything better that you could do? Notice that king is in the middle. I'm pretty sure Anna noticed it as well. So apart from knight e4, how could we try to use that momentum? Focus, thank you for the follow. Archsteiner, thank you for the follow. Also, hello, hello, hello from Germany. Hello there. Queen a2, yes. Queen a2 would have been very strong. Very strong move. Because you infiltrate and you will have much, much bigger threats once white gets paralyzed. If queen d2, then you have knight e4 and it's almost game over. If the queen moves, you can take on b2 and it's just really bad. And if rook b1, notice this rook has to guard this, but the queen is stuck. So knight d5 can become sort of problematic with knight c3 threat. So that's something to keep in mind. And if queen d2, oh, we, queen d2, we have knight f e4. We touched upon that. But I wanted to mention 
but sometimes you even have queen c4 checks. Queen d2, knight e4, knight e5. Knight d6. And I'm still begging for queen a2. With queen a2, no, I'm, I'm dumb. I just completely forgot about the knight. I'm not begging for that because that dropped that knight. Knight d6, f3, f6. Ooh, that knight is shortly running out of space. Knight g6, queen a2, very good, finally. Queen, queen b1. And in fact, I would even consider this. Probably that loses to this idea. Or at least it's kind of uncomfortable. B1, queen c4, king f2, queen c2. Very good. It is the quality of the pieces that matter, and it is not the quantity of the pawns. There. Knight f5, knight f5. No! Knight f5 would have been very nice. Because the exchange is still very good for you. You're going to just Pac-Man all those pawns. And at the end of the day, you're the one in cruise control. Queen e2. And the only reason I don't like this is that you give some breathing space for this queen. Rook e1. Also, rook e1 is nasty because this time the pawn is defended. So, here you should have still kept on hammering on on these e pawns in d2 it's not the end of the world but it would have been more accurate knight f4 rook c2 very very nice rook d1 all right queen f2 wait a second you are getting very close to winning here why don't you take on e3 you take c3 king h1 and Maybe you just move the rook away. Some like takes. Why didn't you take? It's a free pawn. If they give you a gift, don't refuse. That's rude. Just take it. Here, queen f2, then, then maybe some knight d3 ideas. But you can just move the rook away. This knight is under attack. Anyways, queen f2, g, rook d2. Um, here, queen c1, and I guess repetition. Question is, g5, probably there's repetition going on. Mm -hmm. But again, still you could go knight f5. Knight can't move because queen g2. And rook f1. You have a nice tactical shot here. At one moment, g5 was winning. Okay. There. g5, then rook f1. I mean, I don't blame you because it's not that easy to see with the human eyes what's going on here. There, there, probably winning. But anyways, here you have this idea of rook b2 as well. Here, queen c2. And you're still more than enough. You're still in cruise control, like in super cruise control here. Yeah, rook takes b2 is just very strong. So I'd definitely say that... Um, you needed to be a bit more aggressive. You were very aggressive, but you needed to include your knight in the battle, the knight f5 and knight d3 threats. g5 might be winning at some point, but as a human, I wasn't even sure how it's winning. So I don't blame you for not finding it. So all in all, I feel you played aggressively. That was great. One of the things that you could keep in mind is to have this knight c6, a5, pattern put down because that's something that you can use in the future for sure is all right well done guys very well played for all of you some of the games are 
extraordinary. Edgar saying the game was amazing. I really loved it. Um, and if you enjoyed your time over here, hey, follow, sub, or join our Discord as I just posted a second ago. So, you know, I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I hope you did too. Also, we have a YouTube. So if you're interested in that, do check that one out because you might learn a bit. So, again, some fantastic games. And I'm always glad to see them coming. So if you enjoyed it, you know, keep, keep bringing them. Keep bringing them. Keep pushing them. And I like the attitude you guys have. You are interested in the game. You want to analyze it. And that's the way to improve. You will find these games on YouTube. So you will be able to find them there. Paul and NJ, thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follows. Hello, Mike. Hello, Joe. Battle Light, Archsteiner, Focus Grassy, Smothered Mate. I think I missed those. All right, with that, I am signing off and hope you guys have a beautiful day.